Hi, my name is Chris Mizrak, and I am one of the developers for EOS. And in 195, I put together this pixel mapping feature. And I'm going to show you a little bit about procedurally generated effects. So you just saw a lot of file-based media like movie clips and static images used to create effects. And these effects are all created in real time. So what I've done is I've patched a virtual effect layer. And now I have that channel selected and an ML controls. Okay, so uh, here I have my virtual effect layer. And we're going to see a few new uh, parameters here. So you'll notice first that I have two intensities. And this is going to be used um, for gradients, which I'll get to later. Um, a lot of it will look pretty similar. Uh, now we have the two colors also for the gradients. And then let's go over to our media. So here, instead of a library and file, we just have a file. And we have um, all of these uh, canned effects. And let's get one, for example. Uh, this one is Perlin noise. So this is kind of random noise that gives you a lot of interesting color right away. Uh, so the first thing you have to do with effects, since this isn't a file that has a predefined width and height, you have to specify the size you want. So here my pixel map is 128 by 128 pixels. And width and height are a percentage, so I'm going to make it 100, which will stretch my media across the whole thing. So this is what you see with everything at the home value. And first I'll get some color on here. So using my color picker, I choose the first part of my gradient. And using uh, these other knobs here, I can choose the second part. So I'm going to go to a blue. Right now, it looks like it's fading out into black because my second intensity is not up. So as I bring this up, it's going to fill in the full gradient. So this is, this is the Perlin noise, and we get a few options in here. First, all the media uh, controls work similarly. You can play forward and reverse, and you can increase the speed. So you can get some nice effects. So here we can control the density of the noise. So as we go up, we get a lot more visible noise, kind of staticky. And as we go down, we can get just a, a wider angle. Uh, so this will give you like a really nice color over like an LED wall or something like that. And then we have a few varieties of these Perlin noises. This one is kind of the smoothest. Then we have a bilinear Perlin noise. So this will go from red to blue and then back to red again. So you get more of a separation. And then we have a gradient that splits right in the middle. So you get kind of these blobs. So it just depends what you want. And then we do the same thing with a rainbow effect. And then effect layer 2 here will scroll it so you can get some motion. And then, of course, you can rotate it if you want it to go in a certain direction. So then we also have all these gradients. Here's a, a rainbow, and then we do that in a bunch of different ways. And then down here we have the same sort of thing, just gradients in uh, different layouts. And let's go look at how we control gradients. So I'll stop this, and I'll select pixel map 2. So here's a pixel map where I have just a single gradient stretched across, uh, going from red to blue. So gradients work by selecting the start color, which is on the left. And I'll leave that at red. And the color on the right side is controlled by these second parameters here. So if I make it green, you can see how that works. 
And then the second part of gradients is controlling the start point here. So I can control the start point and the end point using the in point and out point parameters, which are from 0 to 100%. So for instance, I can move this red in by bringing this up, and I can move the blue in this way by bringing that. And so I can get a lot of interesting effects, and you'll see how this plays into uh, the effects when we have them running. So for now, I'll leave that at 100%. And then the second, uh, third part of gradients is how many repetitions you want to have. So at 100%, you get four repeats of the same pattern. And you can go all the way back out to zero, or negative 100%, which is a solid color, basically. So I'll rehome that, and I get my single gradient. So now let me go back to my effects. And select pixel map one. Okay. So let's see. Let me get a two color gradient going here. Uh, well, let's see. Okay. So now a lot of the gradient stuff you can use these media playback things for. These will typically just animate it. And the speed, of course, controls how fast you want the animation. If you look at this, I'll set like a pink to yellow. And then using the same gradient parameters, you can see how it'll kind of affect this. And then you can also get um, like a solid, solid line. And then here is how this, the repeats affect things like this. Okay, so let's layer some effects here. So now I've chosen a new effect. I'm going to make this Perlin noise. And by default, it's small, so I'll just stretch it out again. And so both of my colors on my gradient are identical now, so that's why it's solid white. If I bring the intensity down of my, the end of my gradient, it starts us uh, like full white here and goes down to zero, zero alpha, so you can see through to the bottom layer. And let's see, I'll give this a little more speed. Make it a little larger so it's easier to see. And now the cool thing about these, all, all of these procedural effects you can also use as masks. So I'm going to go to my third layer here, which is file-based. And you'll probably notice that uh, this is a later build of software in our development process. So we actually do have uh, thumbnails now, which is nice. So I'll choose a star. And I'll shrink it down a little. Uh, give it some color. And now I will go back to my Perlin noise. So you can see I'm controlling that again. And now I'll make this a mask. So now you can see how the alpha is kind of blending the star out. So let's see, I want to make this a little more obvious. Uh, so I can use my gradients to get kind of larger blips there. Let me slow this down a little bit. And then here I can do, you know, some neat stuff with like kind of 3D effects.
and you can see how it all layers together. So let me bring this uh, back out. I'll take three out. So that was just an example. Now let's go through each of the effects. So I'll leave my gradient pink and yellow. And uh, let's go through one by one. So we have your basic linear effect. That's what it looks like when it's animating. We can repeat the pattern or go down around to almost no pattern. So I'll leave it at one to one. So we basically have two versions of each of these effects. One of them is just a start and end gradient, and one is a smooth transition from start to end and then back to start. So it gives you a smoother transition. So we have that one, we have square. Square with the smooth transition, circles, and circles. And same thing again here where you can adjust the number of times it repeats. And if we play with our gradients again, we can get some neat, neat effects. Um, then we have the spiral and the smooth spiral, spiral and the smooth spiral. And then we have all of those in the rainbow varieties, of course. And let's see. I'm going to go back to layer three. Actually, let me take one out. Take my top layer out. And let me put that rainbow pattern here. Oops, have to bring up the intensity. Okay, so then you can do a lot of um, interesting things with uh, layering here. Bring my intensity up. So there's my arrow. Let me take out these 3D effects. And I will give it some movement. And so by compositing these together with different modes, we can get some kind of cool effects. And of course, all these other, all these other image altering parameters will work with these as well. So I can bring up the contrast or saturation and negative. And that is procedural effects.